what we have to do is realize that we've had a very long-term transformation of especially the U.S. financial system, but also the global financial system, because most of the developed, uh, uh, highly financialized countries followed a very similar path to ours. And so just to quickly summarize, we, we, we came out of the Great Depression and World War II with very robust financial systems, partly because we had heavily regulated them, partly because the, the worst institutions had failed in the Great Depression, um, and partly because we came out of World War II with a huge amount of government debt, so that we had very safe balance sheets. And we can sort of think of the early post-war growth, which was so robust, which allowed many developed nations to come close to full employment for a fairly long period of time, um, was sort of a leveraging of that government debt. So rather than leveraging uh, growth with private sector debt, we were leveraging growth with government sector debt. So this was Minsky's point. He, he argued that um, there are 57 varieties of capitalism, and this one that we had in the early post-war period where finance was relatively unimportant, highly constrained, was a robust sort of system. But inevitably, the financial system would evolve. The memories of the Great Depression would fade. Uh, the successes breed greater risk-taking. Um, so that inevitably the financial se sector became uh, less and less robust, more and more fragile. So it was a very long-term trend uh, that finally collapsed in 2007. Uh, that form of capitalism he called money manager capitalism. And in many, many striking ways, it looked a lot like the capitalism that failed in 1929. So most of your recent work is on one emerging of capitalism. So uh, what went wrong first in terms of the long-term evolution, long trends that you have okay. uh, in the U.S. financial system? And what about the policy response? Was it too little? Was it too late? What can be done to, to change it? Okay, so what, what were the, the trends that finally led to the collapse? Um, one was uh, greatly increasing debt ratios. Again, very long-term trend. U.S. households took on more and more debt relative to their income. In part, this was because wage, real wages stopped growing in the U.S. for the average worker around 1974. So we, we had another 30-some-odd um, years of growth without wages rising in real terms. And part of that growth was financed by households taking on greater debt. Uh, corporate debt also grew uh, on trend, but with some periods where it grew rapidly. For example, in the leverage buyouts of the 80s, which were repeated again in the 2000s. So leverage buyouts would leave firms heavily indebted so that they're um, committing their future profit flows to servicing debt rather than building new plant and equipment and um, paying dividends and so on. So that was a big part of the problem. But the most important aspect of money manager capitalism was the growing indebtedness of financial institutions really to other financial institutions. So we can call this layering of debt on debt. So that by 2007, we can think of it this way, by 2007, we had for every dollar of income in the U.S., we had five dollars of debt. In uh, the early 1930s, we had $3 of debt for every dollar of income. So the debt ratio was much higher than it had ever been before. Um, and those income, think of, the income flows have to service that debt. So you can uh, see how much heavier that debt load was by um, 2007. And more than 100% of GDP, it actually was about 125% of GDP, was financial institutions owing other financial institutions. So what had happened uh, in this transformation of the financial system, rather than financial institutions financing their positions in assets, this is Minsky in terminology, it just means you're buying assets by issuing debt. 
rather than issuing demand deposits, savings deposits, and time deposits to finance their positions in the assets, financial institutions were issuing very short-term debt. By the end, it was overnight debt, commercial paper debt, to other financial institutions. And what this did was it, it makes them rely on a highly volatile source of funding that can dry up immediately. It can dry up in one night and it links all the financial institutions together. So the problems in one big financial institu institution immediately spread throughout the whole financial sector. And it's not just the U.S. because finance had become globalized. Securitization had a lot to do with that. That was another one of the innovations. But it, it made the whole global financial system highly linked so that a crisis would spread immediately all over the world which is exactly what happened.